Hi folks, I hope you are okay today. I'm giving a, a brief lecture on Rudolf Bultmann, modernity and the gospel. The picture before you is Marburg, the University of Marburg in Germany, where Bultmann was uh, a professor of New Testament studies. And uh, this lecture was given on a Saturday night at the Hayward Reformed um, fellowship and um, it's been given again and been recorded and uh, so that you could have the benefit of the lecture and um, I hope it's a blessing to you <coughs> I'm a conservative evangelical and uh, I hope that whether you are from that position or from any other theological position you will get some benefit uh, from this lecture so let's come before the Lord and ask his blessings. Dear Father God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your goodness and your love and your grace. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honor. And Father God, we pray this short lecture that you would be pleased to bless it. And I pray, Lord, that people might look to you more rather than men. In the name of Jesus, and for your glory, Lord. Amen. So the title of the lecture is Boltman, Modernity and the Gospel. And I want to ask the question, how is the church to reach modern man? How is the church to reach modern man? This was the primary question that Rudolf Boltman uh, asked and that's what I'd like to concentrate throughout this lecture. First of all, in order to answer that question, we, question, we need to know what the problem is. If somebody came to your surgery and you was a doctor and they had cancer, in order for you to diagnose the cancer, you would have to get to the problem. You would have to ask questions and see where the issues were in order for you to diagnose the problem. And in order for us to ask how is the church to reach modern man, we have to diagnose the problem. First of all, we need to realize that in our modern times, we're in a crisis. There is a crisis amongst God's people in the West. In Wheaton College, an American bastion of evangelicalism, a lecturer there announced that she believed that the Islamic God is the same as the Christian God. That is a, an example of why we're in a crisis amongst God's people. Another example is there is tremendous uh, creative thinking away from the basic gospel. When I mean creative thinking, I mean thinking that is not rooted in the Bible and is dangerous. Only the other day, a friend of mine told me that he had a friend who was a preacher and was reading a paper from uh, a Dr. Boyd and Dr. Boyd, uh, a theologian in America, was questioning the belief about Christ dying on a cross, that the idea that Christ was punished for our sin was not right. That's an example of another crisis. Even the very gospel that we believe in is being undermined, not only in America, but in other parts of Europe as well. Then we have the issue of homosexuality, where many in the church are beginning to capitulate to the gay rights agenda. Added to this crisis, we have secularism. Secularism has encroached the church, and you can see this because how many times do you hear preachers preaching on hell or judgment? Political correctness is so strong that people don't want to hear any negative thoughts, but they all want to be positive. So how did we get to this crisis? How did we get to the crisis that we see in the modern church today, both in, in America and in the UK? Well, first of all, I would say that the key reason why we're in a mess is because of the Enlightenment. Imagine a tsunami hitting a beach. It would destroy coastline upon coastline of people. 
Well, an intellectual tsunami happened with the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was an 18th century movement with great philosophers like Immanuel Kant and David Hume and others who exalted reason and who rejected church and tradition. Then, coming into the 19th century, there was the emphasis of Charles Darwin and evolution, the rise of biblical criticism, and the exaltation of the physical sciences such as physics. The net result of this impact of the Enlightenment was to bring moral relativism, grave doubts and rejection of the Bible. The whole landmark of beliefs were overturned by the God of reason. That tsunami of the Enlightenment that dovetailed into the 19th century had a catastrophic effect amongst Baptists, Congregationalists, Anglicans, Presbyterians and Methodists on both sides of the Atlantic. And by 1914, before the Great War, there was a tremendous spiritual crisis within the West. The Enlightenment had made man the center. The Enlightenment had exalted reason. And these emphases are still with us today in great abundance. So where does Rudolf Bultmann come into all this? Well, Rudolf Bultmann was one of a number of key theologians in the early 20th century who continued the Enlightenment project. Rudolf Bultmann was a shining star in the academic world of his day. He was a towering figure, especially in the mid 20th century, and he had a powerful impact upon the church, upon pastors and upon laymen alike. Bultmann was born on the 2nd of August, 1884, and died on the 30th of July, 1976. He was a German Lutheran professor of New Testament at Marburg, and he married Helen Fulman in 1917. He had three daughters, and he came from a long line of Lutheran pastors. He preached as well as lectured in theology. He was by all accounts a nice man. Now, it's important to remember about Bultmann that he was influenced by four streams of thinking. Once you understand these four streams, then you get a, a bit of an understanding of Bultmann. Bultmann at Marburg lectured and did courses with Martin Heidegger, a German existential philosopher. Now, the word existential is discussed amongst academic philosophers today, and there isn't a unanimous uh, statement about what existentialism is. But generally speaking, it's the idea of being authentic, the idea that there is no absolute truth, but the truth that we can know is what we know within ourselves by our th authentic experience. Heidegger had his own spin on that, but he had a powerful impact upon Rudolf Bultmann. The next influence upon Rudolf Bultmann is the history of the religious school. They were of a, a, a group of scholars, many great, great scholars in the academic world, such as Johann Weiss, Albert Eidem, Ernest Trollocks, William Reed, many, many more. And their idea was that Christianity was the same as any other religion and had influences from maybe the Eastern religions and the Hellenistic religions. What one had to do is get behind the sources of the Gospels to find the real, real Christianity that had been developed through myth and appropriating all these various other religions. This had a powerful impact upon Bultmann. And you can't really understand Boltman's intellectual tools or his agenda unless you have some understanding of the history of religious schools. So there was Heidegger, there was the history of the religious schools. Then the other influence in Boltman was liberalism. 
Liberalism had a long, proud intellectual tradition under great the theologians like Harnack. There was an emphasis on social action, but also a great emphasis on the history, the importance of grounding the life of Jesus in historical inquiry. Bultmann didn't reject outright the liberal agenda, but he modified it to suit his 